Hey guys, Scheme Off The Grid here. Unless you've been living under a rock, you have probably heard a little bit of scuttle about Disney's new streaming service, Disney Plus. Wait a minute, dude. We're a video game channel. What? Today we're gonna bridge the gap and talk about why we think Disney Plus could be foreshadowing some doom and gloom for the video game industry. What are we drinking today? Today we're drinking Jingle Java by Bent River Brewing Company. It's a holiday stout. All right, you know the drill. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell icon so you never miss an upload. And sit back, relax, pour yourself a beer if you care to, and let's talk about why Disney Plus could turn into something that's negative for the video game industry? What? I don't know. Stay tuned. All right, here we go. Kind of an odd episode for us, talking about some things that don't necessarily have video game ties, but we think eventually could have yeah, video game could. ties. So Disney Plus, it's out, it's all the rave. And kind of a little bit prior to its launch, PlayStation View went away. It's an interesting time, I think. We are in a transition period in the cable satellite streaming industries, if you will. In the digital media. Where the yeah. paradigm is shifting. Like yeah. it's, it's already shifted, but it, we're really caught in this weird space where I think currently, or maybe that time frame has passed where you could get a Hulu or a Netflix and basically have everything you needed maybe in one place and maybe beat the system. Like, well, that's, that's how we, it started. Yeah. You could get Netflix, cancel your cable and get almost everything. Yeah. No commercials. And it was awesome. But nowadays, yeah, I think we're going to look back at this yeah. and say, hey, those first cord cutters, we were gaming the system for maybe five to 10 years. Maybe and it was awesome. But here's what I kind of see happening. And then we'll kind of circle back into how we think this is maybe going to parlay into the video game yes. industry. So we've talked a lot about digital versus physical, physical, right? And we're obviously physical media collectors. You collect vinyl. I collect VHS. We both have this huge yeah. passion for video games. And I just love physical media in general. Yeah. So, you know, we're obviously being drugged, you know, scratch clawing and biting into this digital era, which in some instances has its benefit. But anyway, back to this Disney, Disney Plus, and then you look at NBC is going to be launching their new one. Yes. Which is going to pull Office off of Netflix. I don't know if you guys heard that. No, God! No, God, please, no! That's the only reason I have Netflix is because of The Office. I mean, I watch other things too, like stand-up, but The Office is my favorite show. And they're removing that because NBC is launching their own thing, which I don't know if you guys know, but it's called Peacock. <laughs> Who's cock? Dude, don't. They have so much stuff that's exclusive to NBC. If they're doing that and it's successful like Disney Plus was, is CBS going to start one? Is Fox going to start one? And if they do, all those shows and everything from Hulu and Netflix are going to get removed. And then it's just like, you're going to have to have subscriptions for all these other yeah, things. Yeah, I, I definitely, I, I'm totally with you, dude. So what I what I see happening, you know, and it might be a slow, gradual yeah, take deal. A but five, ten years out from now, what you would have paid in 2008 for direct TV, you will then have to pay that same amount. You're really not going to be moving ahead. It's just on a different a format yeah. to have all the streaming services. Cause already you, you know, we have the HBO, we have NBC is going to be a thing. We have Disney being a thing. Like you said, Fox and CBS, if those are money makers, they're going to go that way too. Yeah. And that's where you can see all your animations, Simpsons, Bob's Burgers, Family Guys, etc. And then on top of that, you know, if each of them are 10 bucks a month, that's not that much, but you have Hulu, Netflix, CBS, Disney Plus, that's like 60 plus bucks for, just for those six. And to my point, that's what you would have been paying in 08. At a certain point, cord cutting will no longer be like the posh thing to do. Like, oh, I'm ahead of the game. Yeah. I'm gaming the system. I figured out a cheaper way. So all of this happening is is kind of, I've always looked at, we've, we've talked in some recent episodes of how the video game industry now is doing remakes galore. Yes. I feel like the video game industry in a way kind of is reactionary to Hollywood. And the trends. Yeah. And the trends. So we haven't ever had a Netflix in video gaming oh, until yes. Yes. here recently, Xbox. right? We've got the Xbox Pass. PlayStation has PlayStation Now. You know, even on the Switch, you've got your NES and SNES games that are like in an app, basically. Yeah, they're on their own. And so you're going to be in this residual loop of paying for something that you don't own 
and when it goes away, so we've seen in this year that we're in right now, or maybe it was the tail end of last year, the Wii Shop closed. That happened at the beginning of 2019, which sucks. Yeah, and that took some games with it forever. And obviously there's hackable ways around yeah. it if you have the ROMs, etc. We, we're aware of all of those things. But for the casual viewer, gamer, etc., there were games, the WiiWare exclusives in particular, that are gone forever. So you can't play them. But then there's also games you lost that you paid for. You paid for Super Mario Brothers 3 to recapture your childhood Ooh. because you don't have your NES card anymore. Or Super Mario 64. A lot of people have 64 on the Wii. Yeah. And they, they paid for it and they lost it. They lost it. And now they're in a position where they're waiting for it to be released on the Switch to pay for it yet again. I'm worried that the video game industry is going to be like, dude, Disney Plus is making this much money. CBS is going to make this much money. Fox is making this much money if they start their own streaming services. What if Activision decides, hey, we're gonna start our own streaming thing, we have to pay monthly, you can play all of our games, but you have to pay for it monthly. It's 10 bucks a month, oh, it's not that much. But on top of that, you're playing for PlayStation Now, then you have to play for the Activision, and then what if another developer, it's just, well, it's gonna start stacking. What you're getting at is you're equating PlayStation Now to Netflix. Yes. Nintendo Switch Online is your Hulu. Xbox, whatever they call it, the Game Pass is equivalent to whatever else streaming there is, right? So it's an open source though to the content on that platform. But you're then saying, instead of Dis Disney Plus is gonna be Activision. Yes. And NBC is gonna be Konami. Oh and yeah. And Fox is gonna be Rockstar. And it's going to turn into this deal where instead of saying, man, I'm paying 10 bucks a month to be able to you know, stream these games. And I can play all the new games when they come out. You're gonna be looking at a situation where you're double dipping and you're gonna end up paying as much, if not more, to play in a, in a, and enjoy the same content that you would have been enjoying and you don't even own it. Yes, let's say you get a game on PlayStation Now and then Konami decides to release their own streaming service. If one of their games is on PlayStation Now and they start their own, that's gonna be removed from your library. You're like, oh, no big deal. I got other ones to play. I got Sony exclusives. That's fine. But then Activision, that takes out a huge chunk. And then in order to play those games again, you've already bought them. You're already buying the membership. You gotta pay that membership again. Just buy physical. Yeah, Just it's one of those things that as it goes away, yes, we can still say buy physical and keep it retro, but at some point, if it goes this way, which this is all hypothetical, these are just kind of fears. We're kind of fear-mongering right yes. now. It's kind of a scary place because, you know, in consumerism, the way I've always looked at physical media is I only pay for what I consume. Why I cut the cord, I don't have Netflix, I don't have any thing honestly other than my vhs tapes and dvds and my video games that are in here to play but here's why we started this channel and i realized man i'm paying albeit only 10 bucks a month here 10 bucks a month there and i'm not consuming any of it so i'm paying for something that well, i'm not, not using, using. Yeah. that's why i got rid of my cable so in consumerism if you don't get to consume something and enjoy something why would you pay for it why would you pay to have like uh steaks delivered to your front doorstep and then throw them all in the trash and not use them well, it doesn't make I mean, any damn sense. It's kind of the same thing. Like, I think gym memberships started the same way. Yeah. People, Dude. A lot of people start with gym memberships and then don't use them. That's how they make the money. And I get why businesses are doing this because they're making the money. The entertainment industry, it's like a gym membership. Yeah. One thing that I do want to bring up, though, is all these services are starting to offer exclusive content. Netflix has their exclusive yeah. episodes. Well, they have to because they know. Yeah. Netflix is telling you right now by their actions. They know the networks are going to peel back all of their well, original content. And I get why they're doing it, but also their exclusives are good. I enjoy their exclusives. Hulu's probably going to start making exclusives soon. Eventually, if it starts trending the same way into the video game industry, we're going to have video game companies make exclusive content that's digital only and then it can be taken away whenever, it can be stolen, it yeah. can be deleted from your library. It's just gonna, it's going down a slippery slope and I'm scared, that's yeah. what I want, I just, I'm scared. Yeah, I think it's a fun thing to talk, or not a fun thing to talk about, it's a, it's a legitimate thing to talk about. And I also worry, all this is predicated on assuming you have access to internet. Yeah, what if you don't? So, obviously we're fortunate, we live in a, a normal town we got internet fiber optics the whole nine yards we're able to have fast enough internet anyways that we can live stream that's not how the rest of the world is there's spots in the united states our fortunate overprivileged country that we live in there's areas that don't have access yeah. to internet so it's just a weird dynamic of how are you going to deliver this stuff to the masses i think is the consumer 
we are exposed to being basically bent over. Well, and there's nothing we as a consumer can do about no. it. No. We just got to have to ride the wave. I know you can cancel it, but then you have no access to it. Yeah. So, I don't know. So This is all hypothetical. Yeah. What, and again, it's it's kind of fear-mongering. Yeah, it's it's just fear. We were sitting here in the game room actually just like chit-chatting back and forth. And we started going down this rabbit hole. And it's like, dude, let's flip the camera on because this is some really serious stuff. And I think we're at that point right now. Where it's a crossroads. Yes, I think we're gonna look back and be like, man, do you remember like the, you know, the the mid to late two thousands, you know, where we could like cut the cord and get all this stuff for like ten bucks. I think those days are gonna I've, be like the good old days. Yeah. But now let's talk about something that I'm not afraid of, and that's beer. Yeah. So we have a Bent River beer this out of the, Rock. Is it Rock Island or Rockford? Rock Island, Illinois. Yeah, this is the so, Jingle Java Holiday yeah, Stout. It's a neighbor to us, Rock Island, Illinois. Much love. We are Midwesterns as well. This beer, I'm a stout fan. I'm really enjoying this beer. Look at that pour, baby. We take a sip and cheers before we roll the cameras every single episode. And you said, dude, this tastes like the holidays. Dude, it does. It, this has really good flavor. This has so many good tastes. On the bottle, it says it has... Vanilla, caramel, pecan, cinnamon, and rum flavors. And that's the holidays right there. And that's what this tastes like. It's great, but it's simple. It's, it's, it fades quick, it's weak, it's super light, which is weird because it has all that flavor. It's just not a stout. Like if they were to up the notch on this, It'd be Ooh. fantastic beer. Yeah. So I pick up on the cinnamon. I'm getting some of the vanilla. I'm not picking up on much, and I'm a little under the weather, if you guys can't tell. Some of you already know that probably from some of the live streams. But the the pecan isn't really coming through for me. I get a little bit of, like, the bitterness of a nut on yeah, the I can, far, I can on the far back. It, yeah. it is very fluid. It works together very well, which I think makes it a good stout. But it comes in at, f like, 5%, yeah, right? Yeah, it's a weak stout. I think this would have been, like, a really good... You crank this bad boy up to, like, 9 10%, maybe even make it an imperial. Ooh. And look into really bringing some of these flavors out. This is a good base. It's a good introductory stout. Yeah, I think a lot of people would enjoy this for the holidays. Yeah, this I good, think... This is a good beer for the masses. It is. I don't think that it's a beer that's going to go down as, you know... Best stout. Be best. Absolutely not. It's but enjoyable. It's, but it is enjoyable. It's enjoyable. It has really I mean, good grabbing a six-pack of this and taking it to the Chris family Christmas, I think everyone would enjoy yeah. it. It may be a good introductory beer, but we want more. Bent River, if you could... Uh, tweak this a little bit and take it up to the next level High you've got a good thing going here like the base of this is a really oh, good it's brew. a good base yeah and i'm excited i've never had anything from bent river before and they're our neighbors so i'm gonna keep my eye out yeah and i'm very intrigued because this is a great in our first in time. our area there's a couple others in their set um so we'll give them a look all right not that we meant to instill fear in anybody that was watching but these are real concerns for us and you know with our demographic anyways physical media is still a thing for us yeah. we really like it we like preserving our history our arts so on and so forth and we have got to a point where we've seen hollywood do something the video game act industry react and do something right we've seen those patterns we're watching the trajectory of the TV shows, the the movies, the streaming services on the television and movie side. Slowly come in. And then with the Google yeah. Stadia, which looks like it's going to be a piece of shit, and the other streaming portions of relevant consoles, it's like, ooh, where is this thing going? They're going towards the money, but it's not good for the consumer. Yeah. Well, at least for us. I mean, some people out there might be like, well, I like that, and I'm fine with that. Okay. I always look at it like pictures on a cell phone. They're cool in the moment, but man, when you want to sit down with your grandkids or something and go through some pictures, where are they? Well, Do you still have that, that phone? That's a good, that's a good, I, I take so many pictures on my phone, to be honest. I have like 3,000 pictures on my phone. I'll scroll back a year ago and look at my phone and I don't care because there's too many of them and I'm just doing this. Yep. If I had a scrapbook, it's way different. That's just, just we just love physical. Just worry we might be losing some of our culture and our history as time goes on as we migrate into this digital era that is very, very scary. Maybe I'm sounding like an old dinosaur. And it kind of looks like one. But I'm okay with being a dinosaur. In the comment section below, let us know. Do you have any concerns about this migration to the digital marketplace? And what do you think it's gonna have in store for the video game industry? 
We always appreciate you tuning in and subscribing to the channel. Keep gaming, keep drinking, and make sure it's holiday beers. We'll see you next time, right here on Gaming Off The Grid. And some holiday beers. We'll see you next time, right here on the Gaming Off The I'm ducking. <laughs> hey guys, Scheming Off The Grid here, and let's... <coughs> hey guys, Scheming... Uh, we think Disney Plus could indicate a bad thing, and... Uh, I gotta grab a drink here quick. Wet my whistle. Wet your whistle.